Hello there, how you doing? Scott, coming to bring you another daily devotional. Hope you had a great day today. Put God first, trust in the Lord. Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I know you have a great day for me today. I know you're going to be with me, even if things come up that I haven't planned on, that look scary. I know you're going to be with me, Lord, because you said you would. Hebrews 13, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Okay, now, January 26th, the title of this message is, reading out of our Heaven Calling NIV version booklet, is Risky Business. The chapter, the chapter to read, verse to read, is Genesis 43. The second journey to Egypt. Now the famine was still severe in the land, so when they had eaten all the grain they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little more food. This is Jacob. Jacob telling his, his children to go back and buy some more food. But Judas said to him, The man warned us solemnly, You will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother along with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down, because the man said to us, You will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. Israel asked, Why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us closely about ourselves and our family. Is your father still living? he asked us. Do you have another brother? We simply answered his questions. How were we to know he would say, Bring your brother down here? Then Judas said to Israel, his father, Send the boy along with me, and we will go at once, so that we and you and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee you safety, and you could hold me personally responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you and all my family, as it is if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be, then do this. Put some of the best products of the, of the land <coughs> excuse me, best products of the land in your bags and take them down to the man as a gift, a little balm, a little honey, and spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the amount of silver with you, for you must return the silver that was put back into the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the men at once. And may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, so that he will let you, your brother free, excuse me, will let your brother and Benjamin come back with you. As for me, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver, and Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare dinner. They are to eat with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him, and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened when, when they were taken to his house. They thought, We were brought here because of the silver that was put back into our sacks the first time. He wanted to attack us, and overpower us, and seize us as slaves, and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's steward and spoke to him at the entrance to the house. Please, sir, they said, we came down here the first time to buy food, but at, at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks, and each of us found his silver, the exact weight, in the mouth of the sack. So we have brought it back to you. We have also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put our silver in our sacks. It's all right, he said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Then he brought Simon out to them. The steward took the men into, <coughs> into Joseph's house, gave them water to wash their feet, and provided folder for the donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon, because they had heard that they were to eat there. When Joseph came home, they presented to him the gifts they had brought into the house, and they bowed down before him to be ground. Excuse me bowed down before him to the ground. He asked them how they were, and then he said, How is your aged father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, Your servant, our father, is still alive and well, and they bowed low to pay him honor. As he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. 
After he had washed his face, he came out and, controlling himself, said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, the brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with them by themselves, because Egyptians could not eat with Hebrews, for that is detestable to Egyptians. The men had been seated before him in the order of their ages, from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment. When portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else's. So they feasted and drank freely with him. Now if we read out of our, our Heaven Calling booklet here, Risky Business is the title. The scripture verse here is 43, 8-9. Send the boy with me. I personally guarantee his safety. You may hold me responsible if I don't bring him back to you, said Judah. And as God is speaking to us in this format, I am Almighty God. I can do anything. While that can be hard for you to fathom, you show your acceptance of this truth by the risk you take. Taking a risk for me, even in the midst of doubt, shows me that you trust me to work in your situation. A risk can also mean stepping up and taking responsibility, even when doing so is hard. That's what Judah did. He personally guaranteed the safety of his brother Benjamin, even though he had no idea what would happen if Benjamin returned to Egypt with them. Judah was willing to risk his own life to guarantee Benjamin's safe return to their father. I was with Judah as he took that step of faith, and I will be with you in your steps of faith as well. Take risk, remembering that you walk by faith and not by sight. Risks feel dangerous and make you vulnerable, but that dear one, is what faith is all about. Lower right hand corner of the page, God made me, God, excuse me, God make me fearless about taking risk on your behalf. I trust you. Once again, it's easier to take a step of faith into a risky situation if you understand and know that God will always be there for you. When you study the Word of God and build a relationship, then you know, Hebrews 13, God says He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Psalm 91, know that He'll always protect you and always watch over you. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, God says, My plan is not to harm you, but to prosper you and give you a hope in the future. So when you know these scriptures, then God can show you great and mighty things which you do not know, Jeremiah 33, 3, and bless your heart. Because you realize he'll always be there for you. Matthew 7, 7 Jesus says that um, um, where you ask for, God will give it to you. God will provide for you. Do not worry about what you wear or what you will eat. So the thing is, by understanding the relationship with God, by knowing God's heart, it's easy to take a step of faith and know that God's going to be with me. God will be with me. I, this situation looks scary. I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. And this doesn't look like it's going to turn out any good. But because I know God said He'll always be with me, and God told me I always do the right thing, if I do the right thing, He'll back me up. Uh, it says in Proverbs that man's, man man's, makes his own steps and decisions, but steps are positioned by the Lord. So even though a man makes his own steps, God directs his steps because he chooses to love God and follow after God. So the thing is, if you if you do the right thing, then God will lead you and guide you and everything will work out for you. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus work according to his purpose. All things work together for good. Not some things, not sometimes, not on weekends, not during the week. But all things work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus and work according to His purpose. So even though something looks bad, even though something, even though there's a situation that is a bad situation, God's going to work it out for good. You're working hard at work and you do a super job and you've been there for many years and all of a sudden they decide to let you go. They decide to fire you. They decide to lay you off and you're going, how can this be? I've done great service for you all these years. How can you do this to me? I've got a family. i got mouths to feed. And it, it looks like this is 
can't be God's plan because now you're out of out of job. Now you don't have any income. And then God shows you a job opening shortly thereafter that winds up being a job you enjoy more. You make more money. You enjoy the people. It makes you happier. You're more at peace. And then you're thinking months later, wow, this was a blessing in disguise. I, I see now this really worked out for my benefit, but it didn't look like it when you lost your job. Why? Because God's always looking out for your behalf. And God wants you to trust Him. So the more those things happen, the, the easier it is to have faith, to step out, and make a decision that, you know, I feel like God was leading me to do this. This could be scary, could be spooky. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to turn out. But I know that God's going to make it turn off in my favor because He said He would. So God loves you. God cares about you. God wants the best for you. So, ponder, ponder on the scripture. Read this scripture over and over again. Get it down in your spirit, man. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and give you visions and dreams throughout the night of His Word. He wants you closer to Him all the time. So I'm going to let you go. But just remember, God loves you. I'll catch you tomorrow. And I'll see you later. Bye.